ओम शांति प्रभ साकार मुरली अप्रैल एथ ट्वेंटी बाप दादा मधुबन वर्जन ऑफ सी बाबा एसेंस ऑफ द मुरली स्वीट चिल्ड्रन Everything you see with those eyes is to finish. That was everything, whatever we are seeing with our eyes, physical eyes, there is going to be finished. Therefore, have unlimited disinterest in it all. If something is going to be finished, then we should not have any kind of interest in that because we know what is going to be happened. The Father is creating a new world for you. Baba is not take, telling only that world will be destructed. Baba says new world will be created before destruction. <clears throat> In the world devotion, particularly, they say destruction is there, but there is no talk about the construction. That is about the paradise. Baba says that first construction will be there. Baba will establishment para, will establish paradise for us, and then automatically destruction will take place. So this is the main difference between the two. Question: What significance is merged in the silence of you children? There are different kind of silence. There is a difference between peace and silence. So Baba say, what significance is merged? in the silence of you children so our silence is quite different than the silence of the world answer <clears throat> when you sit in silence you remember the land of silence you know that silence means to die alive what is the meaning of silence to die alive the father in the form of sadguru teaches you how to remain silent baba teaches everything how to think how to walk how to talk how to behave in the society everything we are mastering when you stay in silence you are burning your sense away you have the knowledge that you now have to return home this is the knowledge we have that we have to go back home because it is a law of the nature law of the world world cycle law is one law is natural law everything goes from new to old so baba this world is old world is the more pradhan so it has to become new and for that we have to return home first then come back people in other spiritual gathering sit in silence but they have no knowledge of the land of silence all the gathering people say 3 minute dead silence or silence but they don't know where the land of silence is what it means om shanti shri baba is speaking to you sweetest the spiritual children in the gita it is written shri krishna speaks but in fact it is shri baba who speaks shri krishna cannot speak this knowledge because he got the fruit of this knowledge no need of knowledge for shri krishna so baba is teaching us not you can say shri krishna is teaching us <clears throat> so shri baba speaks not shri krishna shri krishna cannot be called baba the people of bharat know that there are two fathers the lokik and the parlokik the parlokik father is called the supreme father a physical father cannot be called the supreme father physical father is physical father because he is coming in the cycle of death and birth supreme father cannot so supreme father cannot be called our physical father and physical father cannot be called the supreme father it is it isn't a physical father who is explaining these things to you it is the parlokic father who is explaining to you parlokic children first of all 
you go to the land of silence, which you also call the land of nirvana, the land of liberation, or the land beyond sound. The father now says, children, you now have to go to the land of silence. That place alone is called the tower of silence. Land of silence is tower of silence, tower the highest. So it is on the highest place, so tower of silence. While sitting here, you first have to sit in silence. Baba said, when we listen to the Muli first, we should go in silence so that our mind will be stabilized. In any spiritual gathering, they first sit in silence, but they do not have this knowledge of the land of silence. You children know that you soul, souls have to share those old bodies and it know. They don't have any knowledge about the land of silence, about the soul, about the supreme soul, about the world drama. And they don't know that they should leave the bodies, old bodies and return home. Your bodies could be shared at any time and you should therefore only study very well what the father is teaching you. I must say, don't listen to others. He is the Supreme Father, the bestower of salvation and also the Guru. He plays all the three roles. You have to have yoga with him, have to have no choice. Finally, have to have. So Baba says, whatever Baba is teaching right now, learn it, apply in the life. Otherwise, have to have. That one does all three forms of service, that is all service, as a father, as a teacher, as a guru. No one, no one person can do all three forms of service, no one, no other than him. That one father teaches you silence, he is teaching the silence, not dada or not any brother or sister. To die alive is called silence, you know that we now have to go to home, to the land of silence. Unless souls become pure, not one of them can return home. Even one soul, without knowing where to go, they cannot return home because they don't know from where they have come and where they are going. So nobody can go where they don't know. So Baba is telling us that nobody can go home Without, you can say, knowing where they have come. Everyone has to go back. And this is why punishment of sinful action is experienced at the end. And then the status even is destroyed. As if we go by force. Means we have not made our stage. Then we have to go by force. And then in addition to that, Punishment will be there and status will be reduced. There has to be the reward and punishment for your defect by Maya. So reward will be there, but punishment will also be there. So reward will be lower. The father comes to enable you to conquer Maya, but because of being careless, you don't remember the father. Careless. Laziness and careless. Baba say. Alasya or Alvelapan. So careless, Baba said, don't become careless. Here you only have to remember the one father. On the path of devotion, people wander around a lot. Even we wander from one guru to another, from one temple to another temple, to get the glimpse of him, to know about him, but we were not able to. They too don't know the one to whom they have been bound down. To whom we were worshipping, we were not knowing the true story of Narayana or Sri Krishna or Sri Rama or whatever we believe. Even to the founding fathers of different religions, they don't know in detail. The father comes and degrades you from wandering. It is explained, what is explained? That knowledge is the day and devotion is the night. People only stumble in the night. Because of ignorance because of darkness, darkness of ignorance. Knowledge is the day, that is the golden age and silver ages, where a devotion means the night, that is the copper age and iron ages. 
All of this is the duration of the drama. For half the time it is the day, for and for half the time it is the night. Day of Brahma and day of Na sorry, night of Brahma, same way. It is the day and night of Praja, Pita, Brahma, Kumars and Brahma, Kumaris. If it is Brahma's days, then our BK's days too. If it is Brahma's night, BK's night too. And that Brahma's day is Golden Age and Silver Age. Brahma's night is, you can say, Copper Age and Iron Age. This is, the un this is an unlimited matter. The unlimited father comes at the unlimited confluence age. This is why people speak of Shivaratri, the night of Shiva. Ratri means ignorance. People do not understand what Shivaratri is. Not a single person apart from you knows the importance of Shivaratri because this is the middle period. Middle period in between, that is, between Iron Age world and Golden Age world. When the night comes to an end and the day begins, it is called the most auspicious confluence age. In between the old world and the new world, the father comes at the confluence age of every cycle. Is coming at the confluence age of every cycle, means this confluence age only that is between Iron Age and Golden Age. It isn't that he comes in every age, not in every age, not in every confluence age of every time. There are four confluence ages, but he comes only at the Purushottam Sangam Yuga, that is auspicious confluence age. They even call the confluence of the golden and silver ages a confluence age. Every two ages there is a confluence, there is a meeting. 50 years from this part, 50 years from that part. And so in the scriptures, in one of the scriptures they indicated the I, the age of the each, you can say, yuga, that is age is 1200 years. And they multiplied 1200 into 360 because they believe that deity day was very long, equivalent to our one year day. So if we multiply 1200 into 360, it goes around 432,000 years, 4,32,000 years. That is the age of the Iron Age one they are telling. So we made everything very logically by considering certain criteria, how we lengthen the duration of the cycle even. The father says, this is a mistake. Shiva Baba says, remember me and your sins will be absolved. No other way. And very easy way where we don't have to spend the money. We don't have to spend the time because we can remember him while doing our routine job, routine work. And no wastage of energy. Because positivity has been created, powerful stage has been created. This is called the fire of yoga. Remember Baba, by considering ourselves as a soul is fire of yoga. All of you are the Brahmins who teach them yoga to become pure because we learn from him, supreme, and we are teaching to others. Those Brahmins sit others on the fire of lust in the physical Brahmins. Those who are Brahmins by caste, they are, you can say, sitting the people on fire of lust through marriage. There is the difference of day and night between those Brahmins and you Brahmins. They are physical creations, whereas you are mouth-born creation. That is our creation is by Supreme God Father through knowledge. Everything has to be understood very well. When anyone comes, it is explained to him. Remember the unlimited Father and your sins will be absolved and you will receive your inheritance from the unlimited father. Without him, we cannot get the inheritance. Then the more divine virtues you imbibe and inspire others to imbibe, so you will accordingly claim a high status. Without effort, no fruit. The father comes to make you inspire once pure, sorry, impure once pure. The father comes to make you impure once pure. So you too have to do this service. All are impure. Those gurus cannot purify anyone. 
Shiv Baba's title, he is the purifier. Only one has the title of the purifier. He comes here when all have become completely impure according to the drama plan. It is then that the father comes. He cannot come early, he cannot come late. He has to come as per the drama plan. First of all, Alpha explains to you children. He comes, Almighty Baba comes and explains to us children, remember me. You say that he is the purifier. The spiritual father is called the purifier. They say, oh God, or Baba, oh Baba. However, no one has his introduction. You, who belong to the confluences, have now received that introduction. Those people are residents of hell. You are not residents of hell. Yes, if someone is defeated, he falls completely and everything he had earned is lost. The main thing is to become pure from impure. This is the main thing. This is a vicious world where it, that is a voiceless world, a new world where date is rule. This is the difference between the two worlds. This is a vicious world. And that is a voiceless world. That is a deity world. This is a, you can say, devilish world. You children now know what we know, that first of all, it is the deities that take the maximum birth. In that too, in deities too, it is those who are the first son dynasty souls who came down first. Not all deities came together on this world drama stage. They are coming as per their time, as per their efforts, what they made at present time. And they make their stage. So all deities will come in golden age. All other deities called as a warrior, they will come in the silver age. <clears throat> you claim the inheritance for 21 generation. One generation this. It is such an unlimited inheritance of purity, peace and happiness. So, Baba is giving full because he is ocean of everything, ocean of purity, ocean of peace, ocean of happiness. The golden age is called the land of complete happiness. The silver age is semi, not complete, because there are two degrees less. 12.5% down has gone down, power has gone down. Because there are fewer degrees, the power of their light is also reduced. Everything, even the musical instruments changes. In the golden age, there is, you can say, flute, very soft music. In silver age, then all drums and everything comes. So slowly and gradually, we are coming in sound also, coming in body consciousness also. So many things is happening step by step, we even don't know. When the degrees of, you can say, moon decrease, there is less light, our compare with the moon. Eventually, there is just a crescent left. In Amavasya, nothing is there, just like a crescent one line. It doesn't become completely nil. Never become nil. It is the same for you. You don't become completely nil because soul is energy. Energy cannot be destroyed. Energy can be without any, you can say, power. That is without any status. But it cannot be completely gone, destroyed. Energy neither be created nor destroyed. So Baba says, we are not become completely, you can say, nil. Just like moon. This is said to be a pinch of salt in a sack full of flour. The father sits here and explains to souls, not to the bodies. There is gathering of souls and the Supreme Soul. This has to be understood with your intellects. When does God come? With our intellect, we should think, when does God come? What are the time narrated in the scriptures? And that time actually remembers present, uh, resembles present time. There, in the scriptures, Kauravas and Pandavas, they were cousin brothers were fighting. Now real brothers are fighting for a small piece of land. Not only fighting, they are killing each other. So this is the time. What we can see with our own eyes, we can understand with our own intellect. So Baba says, understand everything. 
So when does God come? When there are many souls, that is many human beings, the Supreme Soul comes into these gatherings. We should understand with our intellect, many souls, population will be about 9 billion souls, already 8.08 billions are there. So many souls already there. Why is there a gathering of souls and Supreme Soul? Those gatherings are for becoming dirty in the world. Too many people, they are creating too much dirt and taking a bath in that dirty water. So Baba say they are be going to become dirty. Even initially when population was less, it was simply body consciousness, nothing. Because of body consciousness, a body consciousness means dirt, nothing else. At this time, you are being changed from thorns into flowers by master of the God. How are you becoming that? With the power of remembrance. The father is called almighty authority. Just as the father is almighty authority, in the same way, Ravan is no less of an almighty authority. Baba says he is also so powerful, but he is not almighty authority like Baba. Just as the father is almighty authority, in the same way, Ravan is no less of an almighty authority, but still he is not equivalent to him, because Baba can come at the time of Ghor Kali Yuga. Ravan cannot come in the golden age. No courage, it has no part, he cannot come. So not like him. The father himself say, Maya, he is very strong and powerful. Some say, Baba, I do remember you, but Maya makes, makes me forget you. You are enemies of one another <clears throat> because we are seeing body, not the soul. The father comes and enables you to conquer Maya and Maya then defeats you. They have shown a battle between the deities and devils, but it isn't like that. That is that battle. What is the battle? It is a subtle battle. It is not a battle of physical battle, whatever indicated directly in Mahabharata or Quran or in Bible. No. You become deities by remembering the Father. Maya causes obstacles in remembrance, not in study. The obstacles only come in remembrance. Many repeatedly makes you forget. Sorry, Maya repeatedly makes you forget. And Maya comes through many. That is human beings only, majority. By becoming body conscious, because we see body, you are slapped by Maya. Very strong, strong words are used for those who are lustful. This is the kingdom of Ravan. Here too, you are told to become pure, but some don't. The father says, children, don't indulge in vice. Do not dirty your faces. Even then, they write, Baba, Maya defeated me, that is, I have dirty aid my face. There are the ugly and the beautiful. Those who are vicious are ugly, and those who are viceless are beautiful. No one in the world apart from you understand the meaning of the ugly and the beautiful. Sri Krishna he is called Sham Sundar. Sham is ugly, Sundar is beautiful. The father explained the meaning of this to you. What is the meaning? He was the number one prince of heaven that is so beautiful, so powerful. This one passes as number one in beauty, number one in power, number one in purity, number one in all qualities, equivalent to God. Then by taking rebirth while coming down, he becomes ugly, and so he, he is called Sham Sundar. The father explained the meaning of this. Sri Baba, he is ever pure. He is not becoming ugly and beautiful. He is ever pure, ever beautiful. So we call as a Satyam Shivam Sundaram. Sundaram is beautiful. He comes and makes you children beautiful like him. Those who are impure are ugly, and those who are pure are beautiful. <clears throat> there is natural beauty there, no powder, no, you can say cream, nothing is required. You children have come here to become the masters of heaven. 
Therefore, there is the praise of the in the versions of God that say the mothers open the gates of heaven. <clears throat> this is why it is said salutation to the mothers because they have a very good quality. That quality is of they have a more faith in Baba Almighty Authority. They are able to take care what kind of person, whoever the person is coming good or bad at the center of Baba. And they have not much ego. So these are the qualities. Why Baba says salutation to the mothers and name is Brahma Kumaris. When you say salutation to the mothers, it is understood that there is a father too. It doesn't mean that without man, world will do, world will, world will go ahead. No, Baba says both are required. Even soul he has a no soul has no gender. So one birth is mother, one birth is male, one birth is female. The father increases the praise of the mother, but present time, whatever our role is that, that we have to play. First is the Lakshmi and then Narayan. Here they have Mr. First and then Mrs., which is not our culture. The significance is created this way in the drama. The father is the creator. First of all, gives his own introduction. When he comes, first his own introduction because we don't know about him. One are limited physical fathers and the other is the unlimited parlocal father. You remember the unlimited father because you receive the unlimited inheritance from him. Why are we remembering him too much? Because we got unlimited inheritance. Even while receiving a limited inheritance, you remember the unlimited father. Even we have a physical father still. Our physical father, as well as we all, remember unlimited father because of sorrow. You say, Baba, when you come, we will break away from everyone else and connect ourselves to you alone. This is our promise. Where we were singing in the devotion, who said this? Not body souls. It is the soul that plays his part through these organs, through this body. Each one, each soul takes rebirth and becomes wealthy or poor according to the types of actions he has performed. We have to get the fruit whatever we are doing. Bad actions then bad, good actions then good fruit will be there. But we have to settle that accounts. No choice for that. So Baba says, <clears throat> it depends on actions. Lakshmi and Narayan became the masters of the world. What did they do? Only you know this. Only you can explain this. Nobody knows in the world. The father says what he says, have disinterest in whatever you see with those eyes. Present time, whatever we are saying, Baba said disinterest. All of, why disinterest? All of it is going to finish. When a new house is being built, Baba give example. When a new house is going to be built, there is disinterest in the old house. Children would say that their Baba has built a new house for them, and so they will go and stay there. This old house will be demolished, even in the physical world. Same thing. This is an unlimited matter. We are unlimited. You children know, sit, know that the Father has come to establish heaven. This is a dirty old world. You children are now sitting in front of three murti Shiva, three murti G.O.D., generator, operator, destroyer. You are becoming victorious. In fact, this three murti he is your coat of arms. The Brahmin clan of yours is the most elevated of all. It is the top knot. A kingdom he is being established. Only you Brahmins know this coat of arms. This coat of arms means Trimurti. Shri Baba is teaching us through Brahma Baba in order to make us into deities. Destruction has to take place. When the world becomes the Mopradhan, natural calamities also help. Those people continue to use their intellects to invent so many scientific inventions that the atom bomb, hydrogen bomb missiles. 
It isn't that missiles have emerged from their stomachs. We had to say Musan Nirbha was not like that, but that they have emerged through science with which they will destroy the whole clan, their clan. It has been explained to you children that Shiv Baba is the highest on high. It is Shiv Baba and the deity who should be worshipped. Brahmins cannot be worshipped. Why? Because although you souls are pure, your bodies are not. So pure bodies, pure souls should be worshipped. This is why you cannot be worthy of being worshipped. You are worthy of praise. Praise is there of Brahmin. Brahmin so they but they are not being worshipped like Devatas. When you become deities, your souls will be pure and you will also receive pure new bodies. At this time, you are worthy of praise. It is said, what is said? Salutation to the mothers. What did the army of mothers do? It was the mothers who gave knowledge by following Srimat. You mothers give everyone this knowledge on the basis of Srimat. You mothers give everyone the nectar of knowledge to imbibe. Only you understand this accurately. Many stories have been written in the scriptures which they sit and relate to others, mothers and others. You continue to say, it is truth, it is the truth. If you sit here and relate this knowledge to them, they will say it is true, it is true, sat sat. You would now no longer say, that, that is the truth. Devotion is not a true balance. They say everything, or they are listening here or there. Baba said, we will not say. It is remembered, there are those with stone intellects and those with divine intellects. To have a divine intellect means to be a land of divin, to be a lord of divinity. In Nepal, they have a picture of a lord of divinity, Amarnath. Parasna, so divinity Parasna. It is Lakshmi and Narayan who are lords of the land of divinity, golden age. So Paras means golden. This is their dynasty. <clears throat> the main thing is to know the secret of the creator and the creation. The Rishis and Munis have been saying, Neti, Neti, neither this nor that of him, that is of Supreme God Father. You have now come to know everything from the Father, that is, you have now become theist. Maya Ravan makes you into a theist. A theist means you don't know about self and God properly in a real way. Acha, to the sweetest beloved, long lost and now found children, love, remembrance and good morning from the mother, the father, Bab Dada. The spiritual father says namaste to the spiritual children. And spiritual children's love, remembrance, good morning, and say namaste to the spiritual father. Mithe, mithe, sikala deva chuprati, mat pita, bab dada ka yadpiyar, or good morning. Ruhani bab ki, ruhani bachcho ko namaste, am ruhani bachcho ki, ruhani mat pita, bab dada ko yadpiyar, good morning, or namaste, shukriya baba, shukriya. Essence for dharana number one, constantly be aware that you Brahmins are the mouth-born creation of Brahma. We are not physical Brahmins. Your claim is the highest of all. You have to become pure and make others pure. That is our duty. <clears throat> become a helper of the purified father. Point number two, never be careless about remembrance. It is because of your body consciousness that Maya causes obstacles in your having remembrance. Therefore, first of all, renounce your body consciousness. Destroy all your sins with the power of yoga. Blessing, may you have unlimited disinterest and remain loving and as detached as a lotus flower while staying in a household and using its facilities. So how to live life? Unlimited disinterest. Baba explains, you have been given facilities, why? So, and so you should use them with a big heart, not limited heart. <clears throat> Those facilities are for you to use, but you should not allow your spiritual endeavor to be commerced. 
Let there be a complete balance. The facilities are not bad. They are the fruit of your karma and yoga. However, while staying in the household and using its facilities, be detached like a lotus and loving to the father. While using them, do not be influenced by them. I must say, don't be influenced that without it we cannot survive. Do not let your attitude of unlimited disinterest become merged in the facilities. First of all, let this emerge in yourself and then spread this atmosphere in the world. Slogan, to enable someone who is distressed to stabilize in his spiritual honor is the best service. I must say, do this service. But when we can do, when we will stabilize our our self in spiritual honor, then and then we can do. That is Baba call as a self-respect point. So repeat it. So memorize it. So revise it. Remember it. Acha. Om Shanti.